Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Amazon S3 and the new-ish authentication method. So Amazon is using their own cryptographic thing in order to talk to their API where you create some kind of signing key and then you sign your message. And the old one was probably written by someone that knew about cryptography and did a really good job of making something that was simple to understand and easy to use. And now that they have deployed more data centers and so on, they have updated this format. And when it comes to some of the newer data centers, uh, data centers that are newer than 2014, so we are still talking about very old one, a decade old, decade on old one, um, have this new format. And what I wrote in my other video was for the old uh, version, which was, works just fine with Ceph. And the same goes for this new version, works just fine with Ceph as well. The only difference is that for the newer data centers in Amazon, they will not deploy with this older format. And we ran into this when we were talking to a customer that was based in Sweden. We're using the Swedish data center and the data center was too new. So we couldn't really talk about, talk with it with the old code. So we needed to create some new code for the new authentication method. So I will look into this now. Let's switch over to my screen here. So first we can go through the test script that I have here. The test script is pretty much uh, configuration, an S3 client and an Amazon AVS4 client. So the old S3 client here, it takes uh, access key, secret key, host, port, and a bucket. And the new one takes the same ones, but we also add a region. When it comes to Ceph, you just ignore the region. You don't send the region in. And the new, this new one that I've written here, I don't really use the port because in S3, you don't send in the port uh, or you don't are not required to it when it, you uh, do this. Um, so in, in that case, you just extend your host with the port number as well. And what we can see here is that I first have this expression to create a bucket. It didn't really work with this new uh, API and didn't really work with Ceph either. And it doesn't really matter. You could create your own buckets. So set up a bucket with a user and so on. I don't really think that that is a super important feature. Then we have this uh, S3 client exist. We check if something exists. We put some data, then check it again. So we should get false. And then true down here, we get the data again, so we can see the data. We delete the data, we see that it del was deleted. Then we put a couple of data again here, a bunch of them. And we list all the keys that we see. We move all them with a specific prefix. We list the keys again to see that they are moved. And then we will delete with the prefix and see that we don't have any. So... Uh, a pretty easy script. If I run this, we can verify that it actually works. We get the right output. Um, so that is just fine. When it comes to the old client, uh, the important part here is we, we have this construct. We have a make call. That is the important part. And then you see all the other functions here are pretty much get, put, head. Delete data is a delete statement. List key is a little bit special. Uh, we have a l small difference here when it comes to the URL down here. We build a different URL. And when it comes to uh, the copy data, we add this copy from uh, header. But other than that, they are pretty similar. So I'm gonna go through the new one. But uh, remember this make call is the important function in here. And this is pretty much the signing process. You create a string, what you want to sign. It needs to be in a particular order. And when you have done that, you uh, do a hash, uh, hmark, sa on that uh, with your secret key. And you base64 encode that, get a sing signature, 
and that signature is something that you send in here to authorization AVS with your access keys colon signature. That is very reasonable. It's not super complicated. This SHA-1 could be upgraded to a SHA-256 for instance, and then you would have a pretty good signing procedure. Easy to remember, easy to set up. But Amazon has done a much more complicated one. So let's see here, we have the same construct here. Um, and then we have this make call, we have a sign in request, and we see here that we have pretty much the same functionality down here. Uh, there is no difference in that. So the important part I'm gonna change or uh, have changed is the list copy data and the uh, make call. So let's look at the make call here. The make call will first take the payload, the data that we sent in, and create a hashed payload uh, using the SHA-256. And that is good. We create a hashed payload, we get back a string that is um, hex values. So we will get a hash here in hex. That is fine. Uh, then we will get a date here in this uh, RFC 2822 format. And we will get another sign date, which is what we're going to sign with. This is a very normal format in the EU, where you have year, month, day, day and then hour, uh, minute, and seconds. And in this case, we are putting Z in the end. And we are using GM date, so we get GMT date or UTF-8 uh, or uh, the... Uh, yeah. We, we get a time that is without any time zones. That is the important part. Uh, and then we have this URI here where we say that we want to go to a particular bucket with a remote part uh, path. So those are the uh, signing requests here. When we go to this, we will have a URL that is pretty much S3 dot the region dot and then uh, avsamazon.com. So that is pretty much the, uh, the um, URI that we will use and we will send the region in here. The query string in this example is empty strings. We will not use any query string in these make calls. When we list things, we need a query string, but in this case, we don't need a query string, but we still want to define it because we are using it in the signing. Uh, and then we will have this signing headers. This is where we set up which particular headers do we want to um, evaluate um, in the, this method. And I believe that these are the least ones you can have. So you need to have host, you need to have AMZ content SHA-256 and you need to have the MS date in here. So then we will big out, uh, build up this host sign, which is host and then host. We will have the content sign and this is this header with the hash payload we had up here. And then we will have AMZ date with the signing date. So this is the particular things we need in our signing header. So here is the headers to sign. We add the host, the content sign and the date sign. And it's important that they are in this order. So we would need to specify the order up here. It needs to be in alphabetical order and we need to have the same order down here. And we need to separate them with a new line here, all of these header signs. Then we can create a request, which is the method, the URI, the query string, the headers that we want to sign, the signing headers and the hashed payload all separated with a new line. So that is a canonical request that we will sign with this sign request and then we will send in the signing date as well because that is needed when we are doing the sign. We get a signature back and this signature is used down here. And we need to specify how this encryption method works. So this encryption method will have a scope, which is defined as the current date in this format, 
year, month, day without any extra uh, characters. And then, and it's a year that is uh, with four characters, so four numbers. So a four number year, month, day. And then a slash, and then a region, and then S3, AVS request. And these are the components we will use in the signing scope. Uh, so I will show you that a little bit later when we go through that function. So just remember that. And this scope we will add after a slash um, access key. So access key slash scope. So this is the full credential build up pretty much. And we will add the signing headers. So in clear text, so it knows that it's going to use that. And we will need to add the signature down here. So authorization with the new AVS for HMAC 256 method needs to have these uh, credentials after your credentials, signing headers and signature all separated by a comma. We also need to add the headers up here. So the host header, we will have this date header. We have the content type, which we don't use in the signing. We have the content sign and the date sign. So all of these are required to be added as uh, headers. So they can use them when they are creating the signature on their end and verifying that we have sent in the right thing. Other than that, I will push the content length uh, to tell it how lo long my content is. And then I will just create a normal request here with the with the path and the different headers here. So that method is a little bit more complicated than before, but the most complicated thing comes in the signing of the request here. So this is the signing request function. Here we take the canonical request and the signing date in, and then we will create the scope again here. So current date, and then we have this scope variable that we were talking about earlier. Now we need to use this scope in order in order to create the signing key. So we will take our secret key up here with AVS4. So this is the AVS4 secret key, which we will put at the first start of this one. And we will um, do an H mark, a hash H mark SHA-256 on the current date using this as our secret key or our key. Then we have a date key. That date key we will use as a key for the next encryption. And the next encryption is we will encrypt the region, which we see here in the scope, we go forward. We need to encrypt that with a date key. So we will get a date region key. Then we, as we go forward in the scope, we come to the S3 down here. This is the service. So by taking the S3 service and encrypting that with the date region key, we get the date region service key. And last but not least, we will take this last part of the scope, AVS3 for request and encrypt that with the date region service key and that is our signing key. So we will take the scope up here and encrypt all of these <laughs> multiple times. And I'm pretty sure that if we just had the scope up here and uh, encrypted that with the secret key, we would pretty much have the same amount of security. So this is just obscurity, not security. So then we need to create this string to sign. The string to sign is the AVA, uh, AVS HMARC 256 uh, as a string, new line, the signing date that we send in, the scope that we specified up here, and then the, we add the hash of the canonical request at the end. So a SHA-256 hash uh, as um, hex because we, we will return hex here. And you see up here, when we create the signing key, we have this true value at the end. That means that we will get the binary result back to this date key, for instance. So these are not returning hex. They are returning the binary result. So the signing key, signing key down here is binary. 
And then we have, when we created this string to sign, we put that into the last of these H mark, where we take the signing uh, string to sign and the key, which is our signing key, and return the hex, va hex value of this H mark. And that is the result of this signing request, which is extremely unnecessarily um, complicated. Um, so that is a make call. We can go through the list keys. They are very similar. Uh, the first thing I did up here was that the hash payload will always be empty. So I pre-calculated that. This will always be the same value. So that is something that you can do. I don't think that will be that much of a, a performance uh, improvement. But yeah, the URI is always just a bucket. Then we will create this uh, query string where we need a continuation token. So this is code that we had before. We create a continuation token, add that to the end. We have the prefix that we actually want to search for when we list. We have the list type of two and maximum keys of 100. So we will get 100 results. And then we need to send in the continuation token in order to get the next 100 results. And then we have the same signing request here. So I will not go through that. That is exactly the same uh, functionality. When it comes to copy data, uh, we have the same up here. The difference when it comes to URI is that we have the two key. So we copy from two. So that is pretty much just where we want to send the data to. And when it comes to copy, we say that this bucket from key is the copy source. So a x a m z copy source is where we will copy from, and this will need to be added to the signing headers up here as well, in alphabetical order, and then we need to create a, a header sign here with the right values in the right order. And other than that, they are extremely similar. Uh, haven't changed anything else down here. Uh, it's just how we call it and uh, how we, which values we send in to the particular method. But other than that, the signing is the same. So this was what I wanted to cover today. Everything is available on GitHub. If you want to look at the source code yourself, I will leave a link in the uh, description below. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave that in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.